One of the best ways to catch big summertime bass is with a big worm. And the big worm is a very easy technique. You can catch bass in ponds, rivers, lakes, no matter where you go with this worm. And so today I'm gonna break it down. So stay tuned, it's gonna be a good one. This video is brought to you by sportsmansoutfitters.com. You guys know that I love Sportsman's Outfitters. I have saved a lot of money by shopping there. And right now we are running a sale up until the 4th of July, where you can save a lot of money on some of my favorite combos, which include the Bruin ELS Reel, as well as any Arc Tharp series or Invoker Pro series rod. This rod right here is my absolute favorite. It's also the one that I use for big worms. It's called the Money Maker. I'm gonna leave a link down below in the description. If you guys wanna save some money and help support the Bass Fishing HQ channel, click those links down below in the description. Now in this video, I wanna go through the rigging process of the big worm, as well as when and where I like to fish it, and a couple of big mistakes that I see a lot of anglers make. I first really saw the power of the big worm here in Ohio. I remember years ago in the middle of summer, I fished a really tough tournament where a lot of guys were fishing three, four, five inch finesse worms on shaky hits. But I decided to pick up the big worm, and I actually did really well in that tournament. I did not win it, but I did really well by fishing a lot bigger worm than most guys out there were fishing. And in this tournament, I was fishing for like 12 inch, 13 inch, 14 inch fish, not really big ones. But it just goes to show you that if you can catch them in a tough fishery like Ohio, you can catch them anywhere. And I actually did just that. I fished the big worm down on Lake Chickamauga in a Bassmaster Open, and I was actually able to get fourth place in that tournament all by fishing this big worm. And I absolutely just love this thing. It's one of my favorite techniques that there is out there. Now, probably the best thing about fishing a big worm is that it is extremely easy to rig up and to fish. I wanna talk quick about how to rig this worm because there are a few mistakes that I see a lot of anglers make when rigging this worm. My favorite big worm to fish is the Zoom Old Monster. This is a 10 and a half inch worm. The reason that I like it so much though is because it is skinny. Although it is 10 and a half inches, it's a skinny worm. So I tend to get a lot of bites on it and I catch a lot of big fish on it. It. Now, I really stick with the color plum most of the time. I will throw green pumpkin from time to time. And if I'm fishing in really tannic colored water, like down in Florida, I will fish a June bug. To rig this bait, you're going to tie up a simple Texas rig. You're going to slip a sinker onto the line. Now, I most of the time do not peg my weight. I like that weight to swing freely back and forth. I really believe you get more bites by not pegging the weight. I just feel like that worm just kind of glides down a little bit more naturally, which really entices a lot of fish to bite. After you slip the sinker on, you're gonna tie on your favorite big worm hook. For me, I like a 5 aught owner worm hook. Now, some guys like the EWG style hook when fishing worms. I personally do not. I just feel like my hookup ratio is a little bit better with that offset worm hook. But if an EWG works for you, then stick with it. The next step is threading that worm on the hook. And one really big mistake that I see a lot of anglers make when doing this is they put the hook too far down in the bait. A lot of guys think, hey, you know, you're fishing a 10, 11, 12 inch worm. I'm gonna get that hook further down that bait so that my chances of catching a fish when they bite it are a lot higher. And I'm gonna tell you right now that that is a mistake. And there's actually a couple of reasons why this is a big mistake. One is a bass really doesn't have an issue getting a worm like this in its mouth. When it goes to inhale that bait, a lot of times this bait is just gonna fold up into a little ball and it goes inside that fish's mouth. So they do not have an issue getting that worm in their mouth and take it from a guy who's caught a lot of 12 inch fish in Ohio on a big worm. Also, when you put a hook really far down in a worm, what tends to happen is it will bunch at the top and that bunch will actually twist your line a lot. When you go to cast that bait and work it or reel it in, you're gonna see your bait twisting and turning a lot. And if it twists a lot of your fluorocarbon, that's gonna lead to a lot of frustrating fishing. So when you thread the big worm 
arm on your hook, do not put that hook far down. I typically just go in about a quarter to a half inch. I'm gonna pop that hook out the top of the worm and then simply expose that point. To me, that is the best way to rig the worm. It's extremely straight, it comes through the cover, and I have a great hookup ratio. Now, when it comes to when I like to fish a big worm, I will fish it from the post spawn all the way through the summer. So all throughout the summer, a big worm is always tied up and on the front deck of my boat. Now, the best thing about a big worm is that you can fish it anywhere you would like. You can fish it from shallow water, out to deep water and a couple of the big areas that i really love to fish this big worm is on the outside of grass lines if you have grass in your lake fishing that outside grass line is a big pattern that we see a lot throughout the summer so i like to actually cast my worm up onto the grass and kind of work that edge of the grass where a lot of bass are going to hang this is the exact way that i caught them at lake chickamauga in that Bassmaster open now another one of my absolute favorite Favorite areas to fish the big worm something that I've been doing a lot today is fishing it in offshore brush piles now this requires a little bit of work to actually go around and find these brush piles but when you find especially isolated brush piles you can catch some of the biggest bass in your lake with that big worm now the other place that I fish the big worm a lot is on ledges now sometimes a ledge will be rock and sometimes you'll have ledges that have actually shell on them. But no matter if it's rock or shell, if there's bait fish in the area, you know, a lot of times I might start with a swim bait or a crank bait, but to really kind of clean up in that area, that is when I start dragging that big worm. And I have seen a lot of times where you will go through, you'll catch some fish, maybe on a crankbait, but you pick up that big worm and it gets you the big bite of the day. The biggest thing that I have seen while fishing this bait is don't make it complicated. The big worm is a very simple bait. Literally, when I go out and I'm fishing it, I am basically just casting it out and dragging it across the bottom. Now, sometimes if I am fishing in a little bit muddier bottom, maybe I'm fishing a stump or a brush pile that's in a muddier bottom, I will kind of do more hops because a lot of times I've seen that bass don't like to pick that bait off a muddy bottom. So I will do a lot more hops then to kind of get that bait off of the bottom and into the brush where the bass is. But for the most part, I am simply just dragging in this bait, dragging across shell, dragging across rock, dragging it through the grass. And that is how you're going to get bit. It is not complicated. Don't make it complicated. Now I have kind of mentioned a few mistakes that anglers make while fishing the big worm, but I wanna mention quick a couple of big ones that I see a lot of anglers make. And the first one is actually the rod that they use. Sometimes I have seen guys that throw too short of a rod when fishing a big worm. And here's the deal is that a lot of times when you are fishing a big worm, you are making a very long cast. You know, today I am positioning away from these brush piles about a hundred feet away. And so if I make a hundred foot long cast and a bass bites me, you really need a longer rod to be able to drive that hook set. Because most of the time I'm using straight fluorocarbon and I usually like 15 to 17 pound fluorocarbon. And when you use straight fluorocarbon and you set the hook at a distance, that fluorocarbon is going to have some stretch. So you need a longer rod to kind of pick up some of that stretch and penetrate that fish's mouth with the hook. I really like something that is at least seven foot three inches in length. That is the exact length of this moneymaker rod. I've also used a seven foot six inch in some cases. Another mistake that I also see a lot of anglers make with the big worm is using too heavy of a weight on their rig. And even though we are not pegging the weight in a lot of situations, I still feel like the lightest weight that you can get away with, the more bites that you're going to get. Now, I typically use a quarter to a three eighths ounce. I probably use a three eighths ounce most of the time, but if I am fishing shallow water, if I'm fishing four or five foot or less, I'm always gonna use a quarter ounce, maybe even an eighth ounce. And if you are a pond fisherman, 
you're gonna wanna use a light weight. And this is the one situation where I do suggest that you might actually peg your weight because in ponds, a lot of times you have that slime on the bottom. A lot of times using a lighter weight, a quarter ounce or lighter and pegging it will help you to get that bait through that slime without too much getting hung on your big worm. So the moral of the story is use the lightest weight that you can get away with when fishing the big worm. Now the third mistake that I see a lot of anglers make actually comes down to the hook set with a big worm and it's going to look a little bit aggressive but I believe that setting the hook pretty hard with your big worm is really really important and the other thing that is really important is that when you go to set the hook make sure you reel down and make sure you get the slack out of your bait because there are going to be times especially if you're fishing offshore where that bass picks that bait up and moves towards you and you want to make sure that you get that slack out of the line before you set the hook because I remember when I first started fishing this bait that happened to me several times where a bass would pick that bait up swim towards me and I would just set the hook and literally I would just pop the slack out of that line I wouldn't even get a hook in that fish at all so it's so so important to really reel down on that fish feel the weight of that fish and then drive the hook home and one of the reasons that you want to set the hook hard is a lot of times when we are fishing a big worm you are fishing it in cover that is off the bank this might be like I talked about grass a brush pile something like that a lot of times when you set the hook hard you will turn that bass's face towards you which helps him to get out of that cover if you guys just saw I had a bass really really hung up in a brush pile and I was able to finally get that fish out and it was barely hooked even though I set the hook hard he was still barely hooked now if you don't like to set the hook hard you can go down to a lighter wire hook and that will help that hook to penetrate especially at a distance I tend to like kind of a medium even a medium thick wire hook because again those fish are sometimes in heavy cover so when I go to set the hook I give them the bananas I put the mustard on the hot dog I give it to them now the big worm is probably my favorite bait to fish during the summer but another one of my favorite baits to fish is a topwater but a big mistake I see a lot of guys make with topwater fishing is they lose a lot of fish and in this video right here I talk about what you can do to your bait with your rod and reel and everything to stop losing so many fish on a topwater so if you guys like this video I think you're gonna like that video comment below subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys in the next video